Let's get to Tennessee recruiting as the balls pick up two commitments. It's four downs as we talk about future balls in the 2026 class. They were the ones who ran out onto the field first. It's four downs brought to you by Medicare Misty. Four downs. Four questions. Four answers. The Dave Hooker Show. Four. 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 Downs. A presentation of OffTheHookSports.com. All right. Tell us what to do, Cooper Mays, as we always appreciate you. And we'll have the ball report with Cooper brought to you later today by City Heating and Air Conditioning. City Heat and Air, 50 years in East Tennessee. Integrity Matters. Coop, what should people do that want to take part in the program? Oh, let's, oh, sorry, Coop, try again. Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. All right, thank you. We appreciate that. Coop, what down? Coop here, first down. All right, how big of a factor was Neyland Stadium in Tennessee now picking up two commitments in the 48 hours since that game was played? Oh, it was an, an incredibly huge factor. Um, how do you... I said, and I've said this before in the past, Dave, that I don't think winning a home game is really the determinant of selling a recruit that's visiting there. I mean, the, the trend of winning and wins and losses overall do, but winning a home game usually doesn't. I make an exception, though, if it's a game where you do storm the field, and we're going to talk about storming the field later, but I think the excitement of that made people want to be a part of it. And so, I mean, I think you saw that two years ago when Tennessee stormed the field against Alabama. That was such a exhilarating moment so i gotta be honest um i think that had a huge impact on this yes and i was told and i'm not in general a fan of charging the field but i was told by people that were there that you know i've actually had these seats before they're right on the field and if it rains it's terribly dangerous because they have they're the metal bleachers that's where some of the uh, the recruits sit so tennessee's 2026 recruiting class is now number what in the nation? Coop, set us up. Cooper Mays here. Second down. Thank you, Coop. They are number seven in the nation. More importantly, third best in the SEC behind Auburn and South Carolina. I think you would agree those teams are very passable depending on what happens to Shane Beamer and Hugh Freeze, respectively. So... Tennessee, I know it's early in the 2026 recruiting cycle, but you should be very, very pleased with where the balls are now in recruiting. And we'll take a further look at that class. They do pick up um, Mr. Bacon, six degrees to Tyson Bacon, and he's six foot three, 240 pounds, a defensive lineman from Hoover, Alabama. Uh, the same state where the uh, Crimson Tide hails from. And now Kalen DeBoer is under pressure after losses to Vanderbilt and now Tennessee. Bacon, the second commitment this week, four-star offensive lineman Brandon Anderson from North Cobb High School in Kennesaw, Georgia, committed the balls following the win over Alabama. So how good is this 2026 recruiting class looking? It's looking really good. And Bacon seems like one of those guys that, you know, he's a three-star across the board, but this is a – he's not going to spike the class. What he is is, again, Rodney Garner recruited him. Guys, this is a talent evaluation win. This is what we've talked about that Tennessee does very, very well in certain positions is they evaluate talent extremely well. Now, there are still questions on how well they develop that talent, particularly on the offensive line, but you have no questions with that on the defensive line with Rodney Garner, right, Dave? You know if he's – because he was recruited specifically by Rodney Garner meaning Rodney Garner found him, Rodney Garner scouted him, and Rodney Garner is going to be the one to develop him. And no one's going to question that. So I think that's – right now the recruiting class is looking very good, and I think this is just one of those steals that they got um, out of Alabama. Um, and, Dave, by the way, uh, you, we got to do the Butch Jones route. It's not that the Crimson Tide play there. The red team plays there. The red team that he called them the red team and it really motivated Alabama. So we have some breaking news as part of four downs. It just happened. Tennessee could be on the verge of another commitment Four downs talking recruiting brought to you by Medicare Misty.
I've been in business actually 19 years this year. I've been in the community since 1993. You're getting a lot of information. Unlike when you were working, you basically they made the choice for you. Now you have to make the choice. Come to us and let us help you make it easy. Call Medicare Misty, MedicareMisty.com or 423-777-5577. Let us help them sleep at night. And we call Tennessee Center Cooper Mays here, third down. So this just breaking, Austin Howard has announced that he is no longer committed to Mississippi State. Uh, six foot two, 226 pound linebacker from Bartlett, Tennessee. Uh, the 2025 class, could this be a huge late pickup for Tennessee? He is a three-star prospect. Not highly rated, but it sounds like to me that uh, he is looking elsewhere. Now, Vanderbilt is, is still a factor, but he did visit Tennessee over the weekend. So that's an important one to watch. Yes. And um, just in case you're interested, Bartlett is a suburb right outside of Memphis. Uh, I, my fam I have family living there. Um, I haven't. That's, I, I don't know much about Bartlett High School, though. I, I question the level of competition for that school specifically. Um, but he is a three-star across the board. Decommitting from Mississippi State kind of gives the vibe, again, that they're looking for... Um, he was initially committed to Vanderbilt um, and then flipped to Mississippi State, and now he's looking at Tennessee. It, this could be another one of those players that's rising up the ranks and Tennessee's trying to get him quickly. So he could also... Or maybe Tennessee evaluated him early, and and he's starting to generate more buzz based on what he's doing. Again, guys, three stars in 2026... There is no way to – there is no reason to assume that a three-star in 2026 will be a three-star next year for the 2026 class. Those guys move up the rankings all the time this early. Yeah, and a lot of that's based on offers. Now, let me offer this. What down, Coop? All SEC center Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. Okay, is there any concern that Tennessee is offering these guys, as in Bacon, as in Brandon Anderson, who are both three-star commitments – is there any concern that they're offering them too early? Because I've said this for a long time about Tennessee's recruiting under Josh Heupel. They had to what? Evaluate people early, build relationships early, which means early commitments. So do you have any concern, I'm going to tell you why I don't, that Tennessee is still taking guys that may be considered borderline level by a lot of other coaches such as those that reside at Georgia, Texas, just for instance? No, because I know the um, – I'm, I'm very much aware of the machine they've developed on Rocky Top to analyze and research these guys. I mean, they have a – I'm talking about down to the conditioning machine. Guys, yeah, they have health experts that can literally project what these players are going to grow into now based on, you know, size percentile and things like that. Tennessee is more detailed – you don't want to sound Billy Napier on this, but Dave, they're more detailed on recruits than anybody in the country in terms of what they're going to be projected into physical, physically. I'm going to offer this up too. Um, the Tennessee can cut these guys and move on. I mean, it sounds awful, does it not? But it does. Simple fact: uh, they can cut these guys and move on. Because nowadays you just go put your arm around a guy and you say, I think it's better for you to go elsewhere. I'll give you another example. What? How many stars did Squirrel White have next to his name out of Alabama? He was a fringe four-star, I'm pretty sure, wasn't he? He was a three. Uh, he was a three-star prospect. Chaz I still went by rivals at that time, to be fair. So I, he, I think he was four on rivals. But okay, I, I go by that. We typically go by the composite. A couple of other guys. Chaz Nimrod has found the field. Now, we question how good he is but in tennessee's eyes he's about their fourth best receiver right correct he was he was a three-star out of arkansas jordan thomas was going to start the season at the star position but he got hurt he was a three-star prospect christian harrison was a starter three-star prospect jason jenkins has shown up again and again three-star prospect so Caleb, the, the proof, if you want to go back and look at previous years, that's just the 2023 class. I mean, 
they are hitting on about 50% of these three-star guys, which is actually a really good level. I'm sorry, that was the 2022 class. So I'm going to go back to uh, 2021 and pick up some guys. But to me, if you hit on half of your three-star guys, that's a win. I mean, if, if they are playing by their second or third year in the system, those are the foundational guys that you have to have that they could certainly use on the offensive line that make up a program every bit as much as one Nico. Oh, 1,000% agree. I mean, part of building a program is hitting on your three-star guys. Dave, I don't need to tell you. I mean, you probably you weren't covering Tennessee, but you were covering Tennessee by the time while this class was still playing. But the Fred White class, the 95 recruiting class, that was Fulmer's worst recruiting class in the 90s. It was also the winningest recruiting class in the 90s because he evaluated guys so well in that class. He hit some gems out of that class. And as a matter of fact, the best player in that class didn't even make the roster. <laughs> Funny enough. Yep. Yep. Can I give you some more from 2021? Or are you referring to Brian Darden? Yeah. Yeah, Brian Darden. Yeah. I've never, never, ever heard as many people as high on a guy that didn't do anything. All right, here's some more three stars from the 2021 class. It's further proof that Tennessee is adept at offering people early that might be considered fringe SEC players. And anybody with a three-star, to me, when you go into it, you consider them a fringe SEC player. How about Christian Charles? That guy's balling out now. He was a three-star. Byron Young, he was a three-star. He ended up being pretty good, Caleb. What did he do? Yeah, he's in the NFL. He was a defensive rookie of the year last year, wasn't he? Yes. Jalen Wright was a three-star. Yep, How'd he, he do? Was. He turned it out to be amazing. Okay. Thank you. I think I've proven my point. <laughs>